Yang Xiaolong. Boy, I have a lot to say about this girl. Yang is one of the more popular characters amongst Ruby fans and early on it's not hard to see why. Yang's fun, she's upbeat, and she's kind of a hothead. You monster! I love that Yang has, uh, it was described as having a temper tantrum. For me, early on, Yang was always a bit of a mixed bag. One second she's awesome, the next she's kind of annoying. Two seconds before something crazy happens again? Putting aside the mediocre to bad voice acting, Yang didn't seem all that interesting to me. I mean, sure, she loves and cares about her sister, but that's not enough to get me invested. Uh, she's also like a mother surrogate, takes care of her younger sister, is incredibly loving. I got the impression that Yang was a one note static character who was there to simply hug Ruby and punch all of the things. Yang didn't appear to have another layer at all. That is until Volume 2, Chapter 6, Burning the Candle. And also, you know, just with her history, like with her mom leaving her when she was very young and her having to just kind of step up and almost be a mother to Ruby as well, she's had to put up with a lot. Here we learn a bit about the character's motivation. Yang had been looking for her birth mother, Raven, the woman who abandoned her right after she was born. To this day, I still want to know what happened to my mother and why she left me. See, they were laying the groundwork for the eventual reunion of mother and daughter, which instantly made the character a bit more interesting and gave you something to look forward to. Later on in the volume, she opens up to her team about why she wants to be a huntress, but this is a lot less interesting. I want to be a huntress because I want the adventure. I want a life where I won't know what tomorrow will bring. Bland, boring, don't care. I would have preferred she open up more about her search for Raven, honestly. Volume 2 ends in a way that makes you think that Yang's interaction with Raven will be a big part of Volume 3. But unfortunately, we lost Monty in the end credits scene featuring both characters was ultimately retconned. Not to worry though, because Yang goes through plenty of shit in Volume 3. She gets set up. But I wasn't- That's enough. You were disqualified. All I know is that you attacked a helpless kid. So either you're lying or you're crazy. Oh, and something else happened. What was it? Uh, uh, oh yeah, that's right. She loses a fucking arm. Boy, this volume sure was hard on her. I wonder how she feels about that. You can do whatever you want. I'm gonna lie here. Yang. Just leave me alone. Yes. This moment was going to make or break this character and they didn't screw it up. Yang lost a limb. She's depressed and feels helpless. She isn't even willing to tell her sister she loves her right now. This is a vital change. The character was officially dynamic. And honestly, a lot more compelling. Heading into Volume 4, I was excited for her character more so than anyone else in Team Ruby. How are Miles and Carrie going to tackle this? I, uh, I'm not feeling too great right now. Maybe later? She rejects the metal arm initially. Good move. Thanks, Dad. Okay, so far so good, Carrie. This is normal now. I'm scared. It's just taking me a while to get used to it. Good, I'm really liking this shit. Do you want me to just pretend like nothing happened? I lost a part of me and it's never coming back. Wow, Carrie did a fantastic job with chapters three and four. I have a clear understanding of her mindset and what she's dealing with at this stage. At the end of chapter four, Yang feels guilty about holding her father back and puts on the arm. Well, now I'm excited. This will be an interesting journey. I'm really looking forward to seeing her recovery the next time we see her. I think I'm doing just fine. I said I'm really looking forward to seeing her recovery the next time we see her. I think I'm doing just fine. Ugh. I'm really looking forward to seeing her recovery the next time we see her. I think I'm doing Stop just saying fine. that. Are you serious? They did not just do that. Did they really just skip over her PTSD recovery? Seriously? This winch goes from this to this and it was all off screen? 
this is some grade A bullshit. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I mentally checked out of her arc because of that. I didn't even care about this well written back and forth between father and daughter. Um, I really like the scene where uh, they're sparring because it's I, I feel like she it was like that was like a realization point for her. And I just like that interaction. Your semblance is a great fallback, but you can't let yourself rely on it. It won't always save you. So Yang should only use her semblance as a last resort? Well, that sucks. You can't just skip over important parts of character arcs and expect me not to notice. A simple two to three minute montage of her recovery would have been enough, but no. They're becoming notorious for skipping over shit at this point. I had no reason to believe that Yang wasn't completely recovered from her PTSD heading into Volume 5. So I really wasn't too interested in Yang. I mean, what was there to even... Oh... Yang is still dealing with some shit. She hasn't fully recovered. They could have shown us this at the end of Volume 4, but whatever. This allowed me to look back at her recovery arc and not be as annoyed. Hell, maybe Miles and Carrie have a plan after all. Perhaps she was somehow able to hide her struggles from her father. Maybe the character isn't half bad. If only I could stop here. If only everything was smooth sailing from this point on. See, Yang is an active participant in the bullshit that goes down later on in this volume. And with that comes a lot of questions, comments, and concerns. Where do you want to begin? How about we start with Yang's mom? No, 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 no. Her mom. Or should I say... Super mom. Yeah, super mom. Summer Rose. You know, the woman who raised her, fed her, and treated her like she was her own. Did you forget? Don't worry. Yang did too. See, it never bothered me that Yang was never shown visiting Summer Rose's memorial like her sister. I know that folks deal with loss in different ways. And I get that she has some abandonment issues and wants to track down Raven to get some answers. That's all fine and dandy. What I don't understand is this. Mom? Mom. That's my mom. Mom? I get it from my mom. Mom? Really? Now, that's just plain weird. I can't imagine calling someone who loves me mom, then that person die, and many years later call a complete stranger mom. Especially when you know that person left you high and dry at birth to be with the likes of him. You look like a regular huntress, and a beauty at that. In chapter 6, Yang and Raven have a little chat, and I was sure Summer Rose was going to be mentioned, but she wasn't. You don't know the first thing about my teammates. You were never there. You left us. Why? First of all, just calm down for two seconds. She doesn't even bother to call out Raven for not answering the question. The question she'd been wanting to know the answer to for most of her life. Ruby's mom left too. Wow. Ruby's mom left? So Summer wasn't your mom all of a sudden? But Yang, you did experience what it was like to have a... Super mom. Who treated you so well that you had no idea you weren't related to the woman. And her mom would take on missions around the kingdom. Her name was Summer Rose. Super mom. Baker of cookies and slayer of giant monsters. You disloyal bitch. And what do you mean she left too? Summer went on a mission and died. Don't make it seem like she went off to go hang with the likes of him. At the end of the volume, we have the big verbal showdown with Raven that Barb was hyping up. What happened to the last spring maiden? I could already see the answer. How could you? What do you mean, how could you? You don't know this woman, Yang. Raven is dangerous. She's not your super mom. Summer Rose, wherever you are, Miles and Carrie don't care about you, but I got your back. Rip to Summer. Thus kindly, I scatter. Okay, so that's one strike against Yang. Now let's talk about Yang's relationship with Kali's daughter, Blake. At the end of Volume 3, Yang is very upset with Catwoman. What about and Blake ran. And I don't care. And rightfully so. See, Yang lost her arm trying to help her, and Blake just ran off. Didn't even bother to come see her. Yang's got to be feeling burnt here. I mean, this is the same girl she went out of her way to help back in volume two. The same wench who then turned around and contemplated whether she was capable of doing something heinous. First, I need you to look me in the eyes and tell me that he attacked you. I need you to promise me that you regret having to do what you did. Yang's got every right to be pissed. It makes all the sense in the world. I mean, she could have been here if she just stuck around. Don't you want her here? Why would I want her here? Don't tell me to calm down. Yes, Yang, embrace the hate. 
I, for one, am looking forward to the day you punch her square in the face. I know she's our teammate, but I'm not just going to change my mind. Try all you want, Ice Queen, but a few words are not going to change how Yang feels. Yang had months and months to think about this shit. I don't know loneliness like you do. I have my own version. I'll bet Blake has her own version too. Bitch, please. I was here for her. We all were. Stay strong, Yang. Come on, come on. She tried to keep her past separated from us. She tried to protect us. Why? Shut the fuck up. No one blamed her for anything. If she had just talked to us, she would have known that. How could I be there for her if she doesn't let me? No, 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 no. The only thing we can do now is be there for her when she's ready. When she comes back. If she comes back. God damn it! Why do they hate me? Why? She's not mad Blake ran off. She's upset Blake isn't there. There is a clear difference. Why is Yang not allowed to be pissed at Blake? Why must everything be so easy? Why must there be no friction? Yes, yeah, there is, there's a lot of shipping. Bumblebee. I'm all about the Bumblebee. At least I, I, I feel like that one actually makes sense, though. Yeah, I love it. Blake is my one true love. You can go home and reenact your favorite Ruby scenes. <laughs> <laughs> like that one time Blake dominated Yang. Oh, no. Fuck. Well, that's two strikes against Yang. I'd be nervous if I were her. Okay, so remember when I gave them credit for showing Yang's PTSD in Chapter 1? Well, it happened right after she punched this loser, leading me to believe that the tremors were triggered by either her fighting or her emotional state. Seeing as her arm was shaking while talking to Raven and yelling at Weiss, it's most likely the latter. I say all that to say, guys, there is no payoff. It's not important to her arc this volume. The Battle of Haven comes and goes, and her PTSD isn't an issue at all. What? was the point of showing us that she's still suffering if it wasn't going to come up during the climax fight. Even the intimate moment she had with Mercury, which was a solid scene, is more directly related to her talk with Ty back in Volume 4. Keep a level head. During the Volume 5 finale, Raven calls her out for shaking, but who even cares at this point? Honestly, these hand tremors don't seem to be having much of a negative effect on her at all. It's not making her any less effective as far as I can tell. Do the writers even know what they want to do with this? Honestly, they should have just held off on showing us her tremors until the day she saw Adam. That could have been the trigger and that would have been way more interesting. It also would have tied in nicely with Volume 4. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam was right outside during the Battle of Haven. He was there. Instead of giving us that scene, they gave us this one. Yang? Fail. That's three strikes, you're out of here. Now I know what some of you are thinking. Vex, those were some interesting thoughts. You made some decent points. Yes, things could have been different, but this is not your story to tell. Sure, Yang acknowledging Summer would have been nice. And yeah, Yang actually being mad at Blake could have been interesting. And the PTSD shit could have been handled differently, but it's really not that big a deal. Ugh, it's possible I'm not being fair. Just cause stuff didn't go the way I wanted it doesn't make it bad. Hell, maybe some of this stuff will be resolved in the next volume. You know what? Yang is alright. I mean left. Thanks for taking the time to watch this guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you thought I was done, you must have lost your ruby loving mind. As if I could end it here. You know I have to talk about all of the stupid. Here we go. Three. Two, one. Which way does she turn on that bike? Who knows? <laughs> Fucked up right out of the gate. If you didn't want us to know where she was going, why in the hell did you show us the scene where she clearly talks to her sister and drives off to her right? You are in so much trouble when I find you. It's not cute, it's just annoying. As often as Yang assaults people, it's a wonder she hasn't been locked up yet. Why is nobody pressing charges against this girl? I think a lawsuit's in order. I'd love to know who thought this was a good idea. Cringy as fuck. I can't believe you were dumb enough to let me lead you here. He's right. That was stupid. Lucky for her, the bandits are absolutely pathetic. Had any of them been as strong as Vernal, she would have been fucked. 
take that drive and use it to find your little sister if she really means that much to you. Because you're going to save me time. So let me get this straight. Instead of just heading to Mistral and asking around, her plan was to track down Raven, a woman who wants nothing to do with her, the MILF who would rather hang out with a horde of bandits than raise her, the same wench who said this. She wanted me to tell you that she saved you once, but you shouldn't expect that kindness again. Stupid. Not a great plan. Make a portal to my uncle and sister, and I'll be on my way. I don't care what you think. Save your breath. You could spout off whatever you want. I said, send me to crow, damn it! That's enough! Could someone remind this fool that she needs Raven's help? Being rude and reacting like an imbecile probably isn't the way to go. Your mom kidnapped me? You kidnapped her? Oh my god, no way. I can't believe a leader of a bandit tribe would do such a thing. Why are you surprised? She was in a cage, you dipshit. Don't you dare talk about my family like that. And why would I do that? Because we're family. How dare you talk about my family, family? Because the man you know as Ozpin designed those schools and has followers inside every academy on Remnant. How could he have... No, why would someone even do that? No, you fool. The first question was the right one. How could he do that? The schools were designed over 80 years ago. You should have called bullshit right there. What the hell is going on with this volume? Explain it to me. Here is the moment where the characters tell us they've developed. It's been a long time. We've all grown in our own ways. I may have been a little too gung-ho from time to time. Bitch, you still are. Yang, please. Do they want us to believe that Yang had developed in that regard without showing us any evidence? The writers love doing that. It's their go-to move. I gave them the ability to turn into birds. Why would you do something like that? I mean, what is wrong with you? Yeah, how dare you give them the awesome ability to freely turn into birds? That's just pure evil. evil. Miles and Carrie, listen to me when I say this. In a world where semblances are supposed to be unique, there is nothing shady or abnormal about turning into birds when characters in the show can do this. You sound silly. It sounds ridiculous. I'm trying to help you out here. Stop pushing that bullshit narrative. Nobody is buying it. Yang should be appalled that Ospin is possessing an innocent little boy right now. That is super shady, but nobody seems to care. But if we're going to help, if we're going to keep risking our lives, no more lies. Someone tell me one time Ospin lied to this girl. Never happened. Withholding info you have no business knowing about is not lying. Here we are, the Battle of Haven. No one turns their back to the enemy quite like Yang does. What the fuck was that? <laughs> oh, it can't get any worse, can it? Here it is, folks. Arguably the dumbest scene of the entire series. If you got two maidens and an angry milf, who you gonna call? Yang with one fucking arm. I mean, are you serious? Are you serious? Yang must still be really depressed because this is a straight up suicide mission. She can't even beat Mercury, let alone Charlie's angels over here. Stop them! We've got your team covered! Nora low-key hates Yang. Yang! Ruby wants to be an only child. In what world do they think Yang can stop them all by herself? Nobody up here seems to care that Yang is probably getting brutally murdered right now. Nobody! They're just standing around. Nobody went to go back her up. They do realize if anyone other than her comes out of that vault, the chick is most likely dead, right? And please don't give me any bullshit about her mom being down there, as if that matters. If you side with your uncle, I may not be as kind the next time we meet. I'm curious to know just what Yane's plan was when she got down there. I could ask the creators at RTX, but they just say. Oh, I said no bummer. I'm it's kidding. a cartoon. It <laughs> okay, Barb, it's a cartoon. It doesn't have to make sense. Just turn your brain off.
Stop asking us such difficult questions. We don't want to have to think about the show we're writing. It's animation. Who cares? We don't even care about the timeline. We try to keep it as ambiguous as possible. Anytime you bring in like official dates and stuff, that's when plot holes can come up. And if you just kind of keep it vague, then you don't worry about the plot holes and you just focus on the story and stuff. Fuck continuity. Stop caring so much. It's just a cartoon. In fact, why are you even here in RTX? Go home. Stop wasting your money. Don't even bother buying merch. It's just a cartoon, right? Right? Yeah, I need to end this video soon before I say something I'm gonna regret. In the vault with Raven, she has some weird lines, but I don't even care. I'm so done with this. She's not as annoying as Ruby and has far better character moments than Blake. If I were to rank the characters in Team Ruby by how well they were written, Yang would come in second place, but that's nothing to write home about. Her competition isn't stiff. Weiss is the only one worth a damn. Volume 5 fucked over Yang big time, but her fans shouldn't be too upset. This volume fucked over everyone. You don't know the first thing about strength. You turn your back on people. You run away when things get too hard. I'm not like you. I won't run. Wait, Yang has a problem with cowards who run away from their problems? Holy shit, there's still a chance. There's still a chance. I'm not going anywhere. That's all that matters. Yeah. I wonder why they even bother. Volume 5 is like a whole nother level oh, yeah. of this show. Boy, that was a struggle. Thanks for taking the time to watch this, guys. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like and subscribe. I think I know what I'm going to talk about in the next video, but I'll keep it a secret. Follow me on Twitter, and as always, I'll see you in the comment section.